anecdote by Brian McAnally. External Lane Night. A car drives along a small country lane. We see the headlights illuminating the darkness around. The hedgerows made the lane practically a tunnel. Internal Car Night. The driver is male, 30s, tired looking. It is late. He looks at his sat nav but is confused. External Lane Night. The car continues on its journey in the middle of nowhere. External Pub Night. The car pulls into the gravel path Gravel path car park of a small, forlorn-looking pub, the Traveller's Rest. Internal pub night. Two men and one woman, ages 40 to 50s, are seated at stalls near the bar, presided over by a large barman. They seem conspiratorial, enclosed in their late-night drinking, isolated like characters in a in an Edward Hopper painting or a witch's cavern. Coven, sorry. In fact, they called, in fact, they called all be the same family. I think that's a typo. We hear their laughs, but can't make out their chatter. The lounge door opens. In walks the driver of the car. The door creaks slightly. The pub is empty and dingy, apart from the three at the bar and in somewhat need of a good clean. As the traveller takes in the scene, the drinkers look his way and stop their chatter. They watch him as he makes his way to the bar eventually. Hi, hello, evening. Uh, I was wondering if you could help me. The pub? Uh, Yes, it's just that I'm a bit... Pub is where you buy drinks, so I can make a living. Ah, yes, right, sorry. can I have a Coke, please? Normal or diet? Yeah, just, just a normal. Ice? Okay. Slice of lemon? Uh, no, thank you. Crisps? Nuts? Uh, again, no, thank you. One ninety-five, please. Uh, keep the change. Five pence. <laughs> I'll put it in the charity tin. Those kids in Africa will be eternally grateful to you. Look, I'm trying to find someone. (laughs) You lost then? Yes, a bit. Not got a sat nav? Well, yes, but it's not right. Been driving around in circles. Google Maps? Been going around in circles. Because for a moment there, I thought you were going to say you couldn't get a signal out here in these remote parts. No, none of that. No technological breakdown or unfriendly locals. So where are you looking for? It's at the end of Fetters Lane. A cottage. It's called Summer Meadow. Summer's Meadow? Hmm. Yeah, heard of that. We've all heard of it, haven't we? Summer's Meadow. If that's the one I'm thinking of. Well, there's only that one, isn't there? Could there be another one? What? Like that one? Like that case. I can hope not. Excuse me. What's all this about? Summer's Meadow Cottage, you say? People have got long memories round here, you know. We've all heard of it, haven't we? Don't tell me you're on holiday there or something. Well, it belongs to an aunt of mine. It's her birthday. I'm going to her party. I haven't been in touch with her for years. I've never been to this summer's meadow. She moved into it when she retired. Bit late, aren't you? For a party? I phoned ahead. I said I'd be late. In a bit of a fraught journey. So what happened there? As you can see, we prefer not to talk about it. Fraught journey. 
got a bit of a cut on your neck. It's nothing. I was at a service station. There was this guy, he was arguing with his girlfriend. Eternal motorway service station day. The traveller is sat down, drinking a coffee, checking his phone. A few other people are scattered around tables. The sound of an argument indistinct draws his attention. He looks and sees a couple opposite twenties arguing. The man hits the girl, shouts uh, and expletives exchanged. A few others look on at the commotion. But the traveller gets up and goes over. The man glares at him. The young woman recovers herself a bit, but also glares not entirely welcomingly at his intervention. Hold on the looks for a bit. Internal pub night. What happened? <laughs> he hit her a couple of times and I went over. And what? You clocked him. Good on you. So, the cottage, my aunt's place. Who well, intervened in this dispute? Yes, wouldn't you? Brave man. Take your life in your hands doing something like that these days. Well, as you can see, I'm okay. And so is she. Well, what happened to the guy? Oh, he'll live. I just used reasonable force. Mm. No, what I'd do if he'd laid a hand on me, he'd fucking kill you. Sorry? If you killed me, he'd kill you. Wouldn't you, Tom? After all, he wouldn't have anyone else to drink with, would he? <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway. You should tell him, Eddie, about Summer's Meadow. After all, he's bound to find out at some point. What? Find out what? No. It's just that nobody knows it by that name anymore. Not for a long time. Not after what happened there. Why? What? But it's probably better if I don't tell you what it's called now. Shall you don't want any notes? Oh, come on. I'm intrigued now. What do they call it? Just tell him, Eddie. Suspense is killing him. And I need the toilet. Well, okay. If you must know, they call it... Yes? They call it... Summer's Meadow Cottage. What? What the... F oh, I get it. Yes, very good. Very funny. Nothing happened there. That's the place. Summer's Meadow Cottage, dull as ditch water. Right. I see. Thanks, lad. You got me good and proper. What a day! Sorry your jukebox was obviously broken, but glad to have provided the entertainment for the evening. I'll bid you all good night. Look, mate, it was just a joke. Have a drink. It's on the house. After what you've been through. I'm good, thanks. I need to go. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Look, it's first left out of here, straight on for about 500 yards, and it's on your right. Summer's Meadow Cottage. You can't miss it. Have a good night. Hope it's a good party. You remember to get your aunt a present? External pub night. Traveller comes out of the pub and leans back against the door. Pause. He gets his composure back. Then he pulls out a large rectangle, rectangle, rectangle knife 
from retractable. his oh sorry retractable <laughs> knife from his clothes and looks at it yes i remembered to bring a present he put it back again walks towards his car he gets in and drives off into the night again the end okay thank you for that okay thoughts uh, shall I start up? Because I made a few notes as I was listening. Um, I also need to turn a light on. Excuse me. I've realised they've got no lights. Um, formatting. It's not in any kind of a format. I really needs, if this is a film, which you told me it was by email, needs to be in film format. Uh, you can find examples of that all over the internet. Um it's, it's very straightforward to, to find it. Uh, there are also programs, apps that will um, help you to do it. So there's that. Um, 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 it's important to get in the right format because uh, film format is clear, very clearly a minute a page. And without it being in format, we don't have any idea of how long it actually is uh, in, in filmed time. Um, Tense. I noticed there was quite a lot of typos and um, there was a one instance on page one of your tense being in the past tense when it should have been in the present tense. Films are always in the present tense. So all the action should be in the present tense. Um, and there's a flashback at one point. You need to make that clear that that is a flashback. Uh, then I then my note is who is Eddie? And then I realized none of the people have got names. So the traveler, the barman, and each of the drinkers, and I think they should have names, particularly as you refer to Eddie. So one of them's clearly an Eddie, but we don't know which one it, it is. I assumed it was one of the drinkers, drinker one, maybe? I don't know. Um, I think you should give them names. Um, that's it, I'm gonna pass over to John. Four things. Right, but you've covered two of them, format and character names. I mean, I know one character's called Tom. Don't know which one that is. Eddie, I presume, is the barman because he says, tell him, Eddie. But, yeah. you know, you, you need to give these characters names and, like, a very small description, very small. It's just so the actors know what they're playing with. Mm. It, yeah, gives yeah. Them, it gives them a mind to climb into. Uh, the first thing, and these wonderful people here know exactly what I'm going to say. Where is it and when is it? These things are incredibly important because it gives you a time scale. I mean, we've got a car driving along. I mean, is this the 20s, the 30s? Is it modern day? Without a date and, a, well, without a time and a place, We've no idea. You're causing more problems for yourself than you would by just putting in, you know, present day somewhere in the countryside. That solves those problems. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I get the impression that this traveller has got a very violent side to him. Kind of... A bit Jason Straighten. Not not shy to walk away from. So, and I like your rectangular knife, Catherine. <laughs> Apologies for that. No, I thought it was brilliant. Uh, I think that's it about it for me. I mean, I'd like to know what's going to happen, but you need to sort this script out, man. You've got to put it in the right format. Because as an actor, this just reads like a radio play. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Cara, Catherine. Hello. Yeah, um, I, I don't think anything else happens. I think this is a short film. It is a short film, yes. Yeah, I oh. think that's the end. I, I quite like the premise. I like the story. Mm. I think it could be, if it's if it's cleaned up, it could be quite a good script. Mm. It does need cleaning up, though, unfortunately, quite a bit. 
Um, everyone's already said it really, format, when and where, character names, not just to help the cast and crew, but when the cast have to want to put it on their CV, it looks like they're an extra if they're just called man or traveller or drinker yeah. one, you know, <laughs> if they're actually a character in something, they need a character name. Um, so it needs a proofread, lots of typos, punctuation. This was a cold read again for me. It was quite difficult to read correctly because the grammar is a bit ski whiff. It's um, you've got full stops where it should be a full sentence carrying on and missing. Um, you've got brackets in there that don't need to be there. This is a formatting issue, but um, get have a look at some format templates and um. A lot of them, I, th I believe you can just feed in your information. It will do it for you, more or less, but always proofread it afterwards because it's a automatic thing. So there will be bits and bobs that will go wrong with it. But you can get those and it's a lot it's dead easy to do. Um, when and where, short film, uh, flashback, character names, proofread. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much just um, echoing what's already been said. Um, do, do tidy it up, though. I think you've got something here. I can picture it. Bits, mm. bits of it are quite mm. good. I, it comes across... Uh, it's like dark humour bits here and there. It can be kind of almost Twin Peaksy at that point. So I think I quite like the 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 the, um, the onus on on the creepy pub. But actually, that you know maybe they're just taking the piss so, or take, sorry taking the mick out of them or out of the traveller or Eddie or whoever is who. Character names definitely important, but do do get it fixed because I think you've got something here. It's a good story. Okay, Sharon. Yeah, I'm going to echo the, the same with the um, tidying it up, putting it in the format and everything, grammar and um, spelling errors or, you know, where you said could be called or, or be the same family. It should be could or be the same family, that sort of thing. That's the basics. Um, have a look at using Grammarly or something like that. It's quite That's a, a free grammar checking one. But do yeah, definitely proofread because it doesn't always get it right. Um, the pub thing reminds me of the pub from um, American Werewolf in London. The slaughtered lamb. Yes, um, of that sort of you know walking into the pub. These and everybody in there's the local, and they all you're the stranger walking, and it's like who's the and it's like yeah, we're just going to take the mick out of this guy. It's um, well so yeah, fun. I like it. I like it. It could be good. It could be a good short film. Um, I like the bit that he said he used reasonable force, but he's walking around with a knife in his pocket. Um, things that, you know, how reasonable <laughs> was the force that he used on the guy um, and things. So, yeah, it could, like like Catherine said, it could be it could be a good short film. I um, think, though, when you're when you're thinking in terms of. It is it is a well-worn trope. Mm. Walking into mm. a pub, everybody stops talking Seems like there's some people at the bar that are all, you know, in a in a mm. conspiratorial chatter, chatter. They all stop talking, walks up to the bar. It's very well worn. I would try and take it in a different direction. Maybe they don't all stop talking. Maybe they couldn't give a shit about who walks through the door. <laughs> Do you know, just to <laughs> just to stir it up a bit. Um, and and um, I don't know. I, yeah. That can work. I mean, they've got a sort of, sort of a twist on it where they go, oh, I'm only joking, we're just taking the mic kind of thing. Yeah, so maybe yeah, that's what yeah. they're going with, but it needs, it needs to tidy up to, to, yeah. to get the nuance to that. You need to tighten the joke up. Yes. Mm. Um, I think I, I think once you've got the format sorted out and It'll understand what, yeah. a, what a script does, it yeah. will read a lot better. I think also you need to... You need to get a grip on the fact that you can't just stick in a big paragraph uh, action and mm. think that that's going that's enough. It's not enough. Um, in actual fact, you need to have paragraph breaks every time you have you envisage a different shot. So paragraph breaks aren't there just to break it up on the page. They are to space out time wise, but also it's for a different shot. So, you know, you've got two men and one, one woman sitting at the stools at the bar. There's a barman. We've got character description. And then you really don't need they seem conspiratorial all the way down to chatter. Mm. We only need their conspiratorial, uh, hear their laughs. 
let the director do something. Let yeah. Them, you know, and and then and then break. Then there's a paragraph break because the door opens. So yeah. so that's a that's another shot, and the yeah. driver walks in. You know. And so it's it. There's a lot of stuff about formatting. It's not just about the right um, font and the right, you know, uh, uh, that all of that placing on the page. It's mm. it's it can be quite complicated. So yeah, go, go and look up formatting on the mm. internet, and um, I think that will sort out a lot of the issues. I mean, you've got a good a good product. Yeah. But you just you just need to get it in the right. Yeah. Everything. Mm. <laughs> exactly. And then I think it'll flow really well. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think it could yeah. be really good. I can, I can see it. It's it's quite easy oh, yeah. to visualize. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's just difficult yeah. to read because it's in completely the wrong uh it's not formatted at all, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Uh just 